<laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to Suburban Paranormal Podcast, episode number four, with me, Dex. And, of course, today we're joined by Glenn in the studio, producing behind the scenes. So, this time, no more messing up for me, clicking buttons that I shouldn't click like I did before. Um, <laughs> anyway, as always, we are brought to you by Cinescape Media Network. Check us out over there at cinescape.media, where you can check out all the shows we got going on. We got Mixtape Radio. We got the Cinescape Podcast itself, Suburban Paranormal, and we got a new sports show signing on. We're going to get him going very shortly, so be tuned in. Definitely check us out on all the social medias and get ready for some more high-quality content. So, hope everybody enjoyed their Valentine's Day. Hope maybe some of you got to go check out the Haunted Ghost Hotel, and if you did, write in, let me know. I'm curious how it went, but um, we're going to go ahead, we're going to jump right into it. Let's see what we have in some of the uh, paranormal news out there, shall we? It looks like the CIA is admitting that psychic abilities are real. However, they are unable to explain why. Sounds like a typical government agency to me. We can't explain things we can do. But maybe they're just hiding it. But anyway, I'm going to read a little bit here from the first paragraph of the article that I found. And I'm going to link the uh, article in the description because it's, it's a decent read. So I definitely you know, encourage you guys to check it out. But anyway, here's the first paragraph. So according to a CIA document declassified on 8-7-2000 titled The Coordinate Remote Viewing Technology 1981-1983, Submitted to the organization on August 4th of 1983, coordinate remote viewing utilized through the methodologies that have been developed works with remarkable precision, but the individuals who submitted it admitted that they were unable to explain in conventional terms why it is that the coordinate serves as a stimulus in the manner that it does. Nevertheless, nevertheless, dear Lord, <laughs> nevertheless, they were convinced that David Boehm's modal of quantum mechanics provided a potentially plausible expl explanatory hypothesis for the mechanisms that make it possible. So it is definitely a scientific read. There's a lot to it, but there's definitely a lot to it that's very interesting for someone that really likes to dig into this. You know, everybody likes to talk about psychics and whether they're real or not. Highly debated, as a lot of the stuff in the paranormal community always is. So I'm really curious if anybody actually has seen this or taken the time and read this. I found it very fascinating. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in there that it goes into for how psychics can actually work and what they can and cannot do. So, I mean, again, definitely, you know, give it a read. Let me know what you guys think. Like I said, I found it pretty fascinating. Um, and it is definitely um, interesting that, as I mentioned before, we're getting more and s more and more stuff from government agencies um, in regards to paranormal activity, paranormal, oh, you know, everything that's out there. We're getting more of. Um, speaking of which, this kind of ties us into our next topic here. Uh, we got UFOs are still in the news. So we have Popular Mechanics had released a story on Valentine's Day as well. Now, this article, another rather lengthy one, but another good dive into many things when it comes to UFOs. Um, many abbreviations, a variety of alphabet soup names, soup names to learn, you know, A-A-I-T-P and bear, uh, Bearing or some, uh, another along those lines, a billionaire who came up and spent money researching, opened these companies to work with the different government agencies. Um, I forget who exactly they worked with. <laughs> I'm drawing a blank and I thought I wrote it down here, but I apologize. But we're getting, again, more and more from government agencies talking about paranormal with UFOs, especially. Um, again, last year we did get the U.S. Navy, where they admitted to three different stories. Um, they're calling them unidentified aerial phenomenon, or UAPs, which, you know, it's basically the same thing as UFOs. Um, it's just their terminology for it. So I'm curious, like I said, we're getting a lot of, you know, gradual shift to 
normalizing in my eyes the way UFOs are looked at. It wasn't, you know, before it used to be Uncle Jim had a story that he saw a UFO and you looked at him like he was crazy. Now if Uncle Jim has his story of a UFO, he's taking out his cell phone, showing you a picture and a video, and you still might think he's crazy, but at the same time, it seems more and more common. We're getting more and more from government agencies and things along those lines. And the Popular Mechanics article itself digs pretty deep into a lot of different, you know, connections between the companies and what they worked on between the DOD and other agencies and what is and isn't happening. So it's, you know, it's kind of curious because um, even not too long ago, we got another story where it's an FRB, which has been, you know, we were just talking about a little bit ago. They're, they've been around for a while, um, but this one is actually repeating every 16 days on a cycle of, you know, a 12 period, a 12 day dead period. And then you have four days of, a repeated signal. So whether that's another alien life form, probably not. There's not a full, I think, explanation or where these FRBs are coming from or what they are exactly. But until we know, you're going to have everybody debating the actual source of it. So again, it's, it's just, I find it interesting that recently a lot of this is coming to light. We're getting government agencies actually admitting to, yeah, we don't know what it is. So, and I, again, it's all going to come in due time, whether we find out it's just, you know, there's some kind of natural explanation for it, or the explanation is there's, there's an alien life form trying to contact us. So, you know, we'll, we'll see, but that's, uh, that's pretty much what I got for the news. Um, I know there's a few other things coming on out there, but um, that's what we're going to cover for now. But um, whether you love them or hate them, Dad jokes are always a good time. And like I said last time, we, we tossed out two, I think it was two jokes last time, but this time I'm only going to give you one. Um, I thought it was a pretty good one. And like I said, I did get permission from the person on Ghost Nation that posts these that I am allowed to read them. So I was very happy for that because, again, I'm a very big dad joke person. So uh, the joke is, what do you call a Roman ghost with allergies? Julius Sneezer. No, we need Glenn. We need a like a, a fake laugh track to just toss in there. So we're gonna put that on the list because it, it, it's it's a corny joke, so it needs the corniness all around. So we're gonna make sure we have that for you guys the uh, the next time it comes around. But um, that's again, that's just you know a nice little short little segment we're gonna do there. So let's go ahead and we're gonna talk a little bit of TV right now. Um, I know we did a lot of discussion last week. I think about TV shows and what's going on. But um, coming out now, we have A&E is set to release a new series. That series is going to be called The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch. Now, if you don't know what Skinwalker Ranch is, it's been around for a while. There's It's like 512 acres or 521, I forget. I'm dyslexic, I think, on these last two numbers here. But um, back to like the 1900s of activity many recorded accounts uh, going on. And now this location is paranormal activity, UFO activity as well. Um, I believe it's located in what a lot of people like to call UFO Alley, um, which is a nice little section of the United States where most of the uh, UFO stories are kind of concentrated and come out of. Um, But here's a little um, snippet that I'm going to read here from the uh, press release uh, that came out from A&E. So it says, Skinwalker Ranch is one of the most infamous and secretive hotspots of paranormal and UFO-related activities on Earth. Few have ever gained access or official access to Skinwalker Ranch, and none have been able to bring cameras onto the property for a television series until now. Um, This series is slated to release, looks like, March 31st at 10 p.m. Eastern. So this is definitely going to be a show that I'm excited to watch. It's actually going to be... Ex- the executive producer, sorry, the executive producer of this show is actually going to be Kevin Burns, who is a creator and producer of some of everyone's favorite history show channels, the most popular series being Ancient Aliens, of course, um, which I know we get one of everybody's favorite memes from, or memes or whatever you want to call it. I know that's another highly debatable thing that we're just not going to get into. <laughs> 
<laughs> but um, so this this is definitely something that I'll be excited to see because it's going to be the combination again of paranormal and UFOs. And I'm curious if it comes out with some kind of you know natural phenomenon that's causing it, such as magnetic waves coming out of the Earth. Or if this really is just the hotbed of where we're going to find and we're going to see many things come out from some other, you know, worldly spot that we just don't know about. So I'm curious how they do it. Um, Kevin Burns, the shows that he's done, I do find have a nice flow to him. So I'm in, definitely going to be ready to watch this one. I got it in my phone. I got it in my calendar, ready to watch this, whether I get to watch it live or if I'm DVRing this show, we're definitely going to watch it. i um, curious if anybody, you guys are ready to see this show. If you're uh, planning on watching it, maybe we can put together some kind of watch party. Uh, we can all watch it together and discuss it. That'd be kind of cool to do. So if you guys are interested in that, let us know. Um, hit us up on the social medias. Let us know you're interested in doing something like that, and we'll, uh, we'll set it up. I'll look into it. Uh, I'm sure there's definitely going to be a way we can get that to work. So um, that's all I got on Paranormal TV. Let me move this microphone for a second. <laughs> um, so next thing we want to talk about, just a little bit of uh, paranormal discussion before we uh, end the show here. Not too much going on that we want to talk about today, but uh, last thing... Um, I wanted to discuss is the does mother nature have an effect on paranormal activity um this is something that i've always believed in and it seems a lot of people are talking about it now especially with a lot of uh floods that are happening heavy downpours that are occurring and what a lot of people you'll notice and maybe you don't even notice this if you if you if you have say paranormal activity in your house i'm curious if you've noticed or if now you're going to start paying attention to this where when there's thunder and lightning and you know rain especially heavy downpours because heavy downpour you know does generate its own energy and there's a lot of discussion about well i guess it's not discussion there's a lot of theory around the reason that it happens is because of the amount of energy in the air and as we all know uh, especially a lot of ghost hunters, when you're doing investigations, the batteries in your camera might die or your, you know, your recorders or, you know, batteries constantly die. Things go off due to power surges and things like that. And, you know, it's always attributed to a spirit that's close by. So what we have with rain and uh, some of the stuff that I read, especially with uh, during a thunderstorm, which kind of lends to the theory here that makes me really, truly believe in this is, um, a lightning bolt. So if, if, if you, when a lightning strikes, it generates 1 billion to 10 billion joules, joules being an energy measurement. So once that lightning bolt strikes, that energy, if you want to put it into a perspective, if you take a 100-watt light bulb, it takes 100 joules a second to power that light bulb. So that one bolt of lightning can power a 100 watt light bulb for like 116 days i think it is so now granted a ghost isn't going to take a direct lightning bolt and show its face and be like oh uh, as cool as that would be actually but um when you have that much kind of energy just floating in the air i mean it's all around us the air is energized <coughs> excuse me the air is energized so it it's not really far-fetched to me that a ghost or some kind of entity, spirit, whatever you want to call it, can use the energy in the air. I mean, we do this, you know, as ghost hunters, you'll see they use what's called an EM pump. I mean, that's basically just a box that's generating and pumping out as much energy, creating this electromagnetic field. Um, you know, and it's, that's like a man-made electromagnetic field. So to get, you know, from all the rain and all, you know, especially thunderstorms when the air is, uh, you know, energized with plenty of, you know, probably positive charge ions and things like that, that's a natural energy and it's all around. You know, an EM pump might only, you know, probably only go like this far out or who knows how far those EM pumps are going to pump. It all depends on design and things like that. But a natural 
kind of energy is going to be all around from a thunderstorm or, you know, even just a heavy downpour because heavy downpour, you'll get, I think it's called a gravitational type energy from the rain coming down and the rain hitting and generating friction and things like that. So it's definitely a cool and interesting topic. Uh, I'm curious what other people's theories are when it comes to this kind of um, phenomenon. Uh, I know we're talking rain. I have read that people also see an uptick on like extremely hot temperatures. And I'm curious if anybody's noticed that um, and what the science may be behind heat. Because, I don't know, to me, it, it, I'm, I'm not saying it's not plausible, but I don't understand how that would be. Um, definitely more reading that I want to do into it, but I'm curious what other people may say about, you know, extreme hot temperatures causing this. Cold temperatures I can see, but because, I mean, you, you, we always see cold spots, um, when you're doing the paranormal investigating as well. So I'm curious how, say, you know, extreme hot temperatures can have sort of the same effect. And, and again, I, I'm curious if anybody has noticed, if you have activity in your home, do you notice it flare up during, you know, say these hot weather streaks or these extreme thunderstorms that we have in the area? Um, or if there's anything else you kind of notice that may or may not, uh, well, I guess, like I said, we're talking about Mother Nature. So do you notice any other, I'd say, weather patterns would probably be the best way to say. It. Do you notice anything particular that may or may not, you know, even quiet down spiritual activity versus actually raise spiritual activity? Um, again, I'm, I'm the the study of how Mother Nature affects this kind of stuff is is definitely an interesting one that I seem to have started to go down a rabbit hole that I'm sure I'll cover or uncover, I should say, more information. And I'm curious, like I said, other people accounts of this so that, you know, I'd like to put together something that maybe we can, you know, publish out there and let everybody know. Um, so that, that's all really, um, I want to talk about that. Like I said, I know water, things like that are always related. So that's another reason why I, you know, think the whole thunderstorms and rain cause the uptick in temperature just because of water alone. Um, but anyway, guys, definitely thanks for tuning in. Like I said, I didn't want to go super long one today. We didn't have too much to cover. Um, a lot going on right now, but, um, we'll definitely be back again in two weeks, with a lot more to talk about. So again, don't forget, to check us out on social media. If you have anything that you guys want to see us talk about, or if you have something you want us to discuss, hit us up at uh, suburbanparanormal at gmail.com. Um, again, you can message us also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as well. So definitely get subscribed, follow us on the uh, social medias, and guys, again, we'll uh, we'll see you soon. Take care. <laughs>